Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, first, I want to thank the leadership in Congress for moving the emergency supplemental spending package forward to the President. Uh, we're hoping he'll sign it uh, early next week. Uh, this funding will provide an additional $1.5 billion for the Department of Homeland Security for additional temporary facilities, transportation, medical care, consumables, and surge operations related to the care, custody, and processing of migrants apprehended at the border and crossing at ports of entry. Contrary to the reporting, children in CBP custody at the border are receiving access to key supplies, including toothbrushes, appropriate meals, blankets, showers as soon as they can be provided, and medical screening. The real story I would submit to you on the border crisis and our response is about our Border Patrol agents who have chosen a career about protecting others. Border Patrol agents, supported by CBP officers, ICE enforcement and removal officers, Homeland Security Investigation Special Agents, U.S. Coast Guard Medical Corpsmen, public health service doctors, military professionals, and hundreds of DHS volunteers, along with dedicated NGOs and local border communities, all of whom have been working tirelessly without thanks or enough support to care for the unprecedented surge of vulnerable families and children in our care, all while still securing our border. I'm in awe of their effort and steadfast commitment. At the same time, the story is also about vulnerable populations from Central America who continue to be enticed into a smuggling cycle that puts them at risk, at risk and enriches violent criminal organizations. This cycle puts children in danger, as we have seen tragically and devastatingly in the images of Oscar and Valeria on the banks of the Rio Grande. Valeria was the fourth child, fourth death of a child in the past week attempting to cross into the United States. The situation should not be acceptable to any of us. It should galvanize action and real debate based on what is actually happening on the border and why. And yet, here in Washington, we have collectively failed to act to address the drivers of the crisis. This failure is not on the men and women of DHS and definitely not on the outstanding Border Patrol agents, CBP officers, and ICE officers who have borne the brunt of the challenges and most of the criticism. They deserve better. And so do the families and children of Central America who are being sold false promises by smugglers. Our men and women deserve the resources they need to address the humanitarian crisis that they're receiving in the supplemental. It goes a long way. But they also need the targeted changes in the immigration laws necessary to restore integrity to the immigration system at the border and our border security. Do you still support or, or do you support a uh, operation by ICE uh, for undocumented? It's become clear that over the past three weeks since the administration reached a new agreement with Mexico that we've seen a substantial increase in the number of interdictions on the Mexican southern border and a sincere effort to address the transportation networks coming through Mexico. We look forward to increasing deployments of Mexico's National Guard over the coming weeks and enhance results from their continued efforts to stem the flow. We've also worked with Mexico to initiate the expansion of the migrant protection protocols at the existing locations, and we are implementing plans to add additional locations across the border in the coming weeks. These initiatives are making an impact, and we are now anticipating a significant reduction in border crossing numbers for June, up to 25 percent when compared to the record level in May. Uh, it, it seems like from what we see, the problems there seem to be that that's not existing in other, in other sectors along the border? The supplemental is for the humanitarian mission. It, it's carefully budgeted and applied for facilities, uh, transport care on, on the border. It will replace some overtime funding for surge operations for CBP and ICE, uh, but most of that money is really just focused on mi mitigating the flow and addressing it. In terms of when we're going to know if these efforts in Mexico are making an impact, I, I think the, these three weeks have demonstrated that they are already. Uh, that 25 percent decrease in June is, is more than we've seen. Uh, in past years, we are not really tracking a seasonal pattern anymore. It's more about the pull factors, in, in my experience, than uh, tr traditional weather or agricultural seasonal uh, workers. Uh, this is a different uh, situation. So I think we're going to know uh, basically by mid-July and certainly by the end of July if, if these efforts are, are sustained and having a significant impact. Uh, we're also going to see additional focus in Guatemala and Honduras come online this summer, an additional capability which I think can, can also augment uh, the impact of the partnership. So I, I think we're going to see continued reduction in the numbers w which will alleviate some of the capacity constraints we've had at the same time as we're bringing facilities online and, and that should present a much better situation at the border uh, for the arriving migrants uh, and also help address the flow and address the criminals that are profiting from it. Okay. Thanks, everybody. As always, if you have any additional follow-up, please. Uh